called Revelations, you know what I'm saying? Revelations 12. At birth, I was given the name. Peace. Here we go. Another day from the desk of Apocalypse Podcast, Dogs to Gods Entertainment. With a quick word of reflection. I'm your host, Brother Michael Muhammad, Apocalypse. And we're going to explain that in a few days. But look, we are at the eighth step in this season of walking the road to recovery. We're on the road (laughs) to recovery at the eighth step. What is the eighth step? Know where you're going. Man, oh man, oh man. It is so important, especially coming up out of drug addiction. It's important in general, but it's especially important coming up out of drug addiction to know where you are going. I promise you, you know, it's so many ways to get distracted if you don't know where you are going. Hey, look, you remember those? How many of us are old enough <laughs> to remember those road maps? Remember them road maps? See, the, the, today we blessed with the technology, GPS, you know what I mean? Man, I remember the first time that I had to rely on a road map. Good God Almighty, if you don't know how, you have to study to know how to read the road map. You know what I mean? So, you gotta know when you're on the highway. You gotta know when you're on the little side street. You gotta know whether you going north, east, north, south, east, west, because when you get to your turn, <laughs> knowing the direction you go, you're going in is gonna determine whether you're gonna make a right or a left. You understand what I'm saying? Man, those road maps, I, I can picture myself right now many, on many occasions on the side of the road trying to figure out, man, I thought I was supposed to turn left, man. I thought I was supposed to turn right, right? (laughs) But even in the days of GPS, you know what I mean? You still have to plug in your destination. Is that right? You have to plug, so you have to know where you are going. You know what I mean? And listen, in this sense, on the road, to recovery. See, we're on the road, man. We have made a decision. You know what I mean? We have found the love. You know, step number two. We out with the old, out with the old you, in with the new you. We nurturing and we developing this person, this new person that we, we're becoming. We have processed or we're processing the data. You know, we're learning things about ourselves that we or we we getting we getting at the foundation of things about ourselves. We are going down into the root cause of certain things of ourselves that we may not have understood that this is what was taking place, or this is why I act the way I do, or this is why I allow myself to get caught up into this condition anyway. So there's a lot of information that we're finding out and processing the data. And so with that understanding, we know that two things can't occupy the same space at the same time. So, and and this old us is grown up, strong, firm, you know, fixed in its place, right? So we know that we have to be patient with the process. So, so now and then we focus on today step number seven we're focusing on today i can't get stuck in the past you know what i mean i can't really be so concerned about tomorrow because i have to get to tomorrow in order to be able to deal with tomorrow so i'm focused on today i'm laying it out i'm planning planning my work i'm working my plan i'm focused on getting something done to further my cause in the direction that I'm going to become free of drug addiction, right? And so now I got to know where I'm 
going. For instance, where, what is a place, <laughs> a place that you want to get to in this process on this road? One good place to get to is free from drug abuse. I don't use drugs no more, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so what I have to learn how to do, I have to learn, I have to learn how to paint pictures in my mind. So I have to develop my imagination. So what does that look like? What do I look like off drugs? How does that feel off drugs? Now, how well am I able to embrace that thought embrace how that feels you know will it put a smile on on my face what well, smile then you know <laughs> close your eyes like like our miss louis farcott said in belief in a law say you don't even have a worthy goal to strive for right they say close your eyes you know what i'm saying can you see it like picture picture it and then once you picture it you know look at it imagine it make it vivid make it real in your mind and then how does it feel man experience it go there for a minute how does it feel like, oh yeah because once you get that feeling you're gonna want to feel it again you know what i'm saying so if we can learn how to embrace it on from the inside because we are inside out people we've been turned inside out but the reality is we are spiritual beings housed in flesh so our true self is on the inside so we gotta be able to go go inside and grab it wear it love it embrace it become it that's how we become it right so anyway <laughs> that's enough that's enough for me uh Step eight is in full effect. We're gonna bring our big brother on, brother Hashim Hakeem, <laughs> who did a wonderful job. I could not have done it better in terms of the voiceover of this book. I could not have done it better. So I'm so grateful for my brother for agreeing to help us in this process. And look, before I go to brother Hashim, if you're in Chicago, we are at the foodie spot, 7350 South Stony Island Avenue in the food desert. Come on over there and get you some good food, some good dessert, and, you know, support us, keep us up, keep us growing, you know what I'm saying? And then, in the meantime, in between time, <laughs> Brother Hashim, let's go get this step eight. Peace. Step eight, know where you're going. This is a great time to look within yourself to identify where you would like to end up as a result of starting this walk to recover. This step is like putting a 2,000 piece puzzle together. It is nothing special about the number 2,000. I was just reflecting on how I used to feel after emptying the box of a 2,000 piece puzzle on the table. <sighs> where do I start? I don't know about you, but the picture on the box was always where I started. It was something about having the picture of the end result in my head that eased my mind towards having to deal with all of the pieces on the table. Another key for me was to get as much of the border done as possible. For me, knowing that if the back of the pieces was straight, then it had to be part of the border. What is my point in all of this? Picture yourself in the position in life that you are striving for. For me, that was a drug-free, responsible family man, a drug-free businessman, a successful drug-free musician and artist, and much, much more. And because I knew that I was coming out of a lifestyle of having daily habits of scheming and conniving to get the next hit, I had to replace that with better daily practice. This led me to more reading and writing. I read books like Miseducation of the Negro by Carter G. Woodson, the Destruction of a Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams. I got my hands on books like Fall of America and Our Savior Has Arrived by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It also led me to more studying the Word of God and applying biblical principles to my everyday life. These actions were like placing those border pieces of the puzzle around my everyday life so that my focus could be the picture that was being created inside the border. There was a time when walking out of my door meant that I was going to get high, have a drink, or smoke a cigarette sooner or later. 
It didn't matter what else was going to happen throughout the day. As long as before it was all said and done, one or all of the above took place at some point before the day ended. I was good. Using drugs had become culture. It had become my way of life. Speaking of culture, I'm a musician and I love playing bass guitar, even to this day. I played in local bands and I have to say that I was then and even now pretty good at it. I also had dreams of being a professional basketball player, so we played ball quite a bit growing up. On top of that, I had become so dependent on drugs that it felt like I couldn't live without them. I'm pointing this out because I want you to know that if this is you, these steps are designed to help reshape your culture. And in starting the process, you have to be able to vividly paint a picture in your mind of where you're going. Plan your work and work your plan. This is key in always having somewhere to go and something to do. Chart out your journey. Picture yourself taking a walk to the corner store. One step at a time, you can see how that journey plays out. Why? Because you know where you're going. Knowing where you're going is very important. When you know where you are going and are determined to get there, it is harder to be taken off course. This is very different from starting your day off without aim and purpose. When you have made a clear decision that you are no longer going to be depending on drugs, and old friends or get high partner calls you up and asks, what are you about to get into? And your answer is, nothing much. You could be in big trouble. Even if they know you're on a mission to clean yourself up, just a friendly, why don't you come roll with me real quick? I'm about to make a quick run to my mother's house. You're not doing anything, why not? Your homie is not on the same mission that you're on. So he may light a cigarette up on the way, no problem. Then he may stop at the liquor store and grab a little taste. And for all you know, by the time he gets to his mother's house, you realize that he's not gonna see mama. He's gonna grab a little something from the dope man in mama's neighborhood. This is just a scenario to point at the very point in this step. Know where you're going and move in that direction. Because there is always someone who has somewhere for you to go that may not be the place that you desire. So, have somewhere to go. This new person that you are becoming must be comfortable with establishing new spheres of influence. Have somewhere to go and know where you're going. There is nothing wrong with meeting people who have what you desire. They may be willing to teach you how they were able to accomplish their achievements. Beyond kicking the habit, begin to set short-term and long-term goals. This will assure you that you have somewhere to go and you know where you are going. For instance, my brother and I planned to start a music project that was going to take so many hours of studio time. So a goal for me was to have a portion of the money for each studio session. It felt so good to have my portion of the money each time we had a session. I wanted to own my own vehicle. So I saved my money up and purchased a 1977 Maverick. It was an old car, but it belonged to me. And that felt great. So get some wins under your belt. It will definitely feed the direction you're going. It's something about setting a goal and reaching it. That's so fulfilling. This builds confidence. One of the things a person coming out of a drug addiction needs is confidence. Confidence means a feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one's own abilities and qualities. In knowing where you're going, to believe in yourself is key. However, the Holy Quran teaches that mere belief accounts for nothing except carried into practice. When you set a goal and believe that you can achieve the goal, this is the beginning of the process. It's sort of like the baptism we talked about earlier. Getting dipped in water is only the beginning of the journey. The proof to oneself is in the practice and the obtaining of results. We are almost where we want to be. I have another point to make about knowing where you're going. This book was in my mind over 10 years. When I started, it didn't have a title. The title was My Journey Through Addiction. It had steps involved, but I clearly was not ready to write a book on this subject because I did not have a clear vision of how to lay out the steps. 
What I mean is that I was so caught up in day-to-day -day life, I could not focus on how to provide this information in a way to be a help to the reader. Life is still a struggle. However, I have just been blessed to dig deep into the purpose of this material to present it in a way to give insight based on practical application. As this project materialized in my head, the picture of how to lay it out became crystal clear in my mind. And step by step, here it is for you to participate in the process. I was recently asked, when you stopped using drugs, how did you get rid of the cravings? I had to stop it. This is someone who I obviously had shared my story with. This was also someone who I work with, who is very gifted in her culinary skills. I knew that I had to really concentrate on how I would answer this question. I simply started going through these steps that were already laid out in my mind. I have told many of these stories in this writing so many times. I have made these points on so many different occasions. So I talked to her about making the decision. I went into finding the love. We passionately begin talking about getting rid of the old you and making sure you fill the void by creating and developing a new you. We talked about the drug's appeal to the pleasure center. So we mentioned the fact that when you start filling in the time slots that we would use for drugs, it had to be with something pleasurable. However, not detrimental. You see, it came out so easy and passionately that it was therapeutic for me. I knew then that this is where I was going. I knew then that it was time to write this book. This work came through me so fast it blew my mind. It reminds me of a word from my great brother, Milton D. Muhammad. Allah rest his soul. He said, brother, Every answer to your prayers come to you through people, places, or things, and time and condition will determine how soon you receive it. So, know where you are going, and pay attention to the people, places, and things that come into contact with you, because you'll never know where you'll be in the midst of the answer to your prayers. Know where you're going. Don't stop until you get there.